Wow, you guys, check this out. This is so cool. It's so modern. This is really beautiful, and I love that it's modern, but it keeps the early aesthetic and color scheme of the original Sims game. I really like that a lot. Wow, the updated interface in Create a Sim is phenomenal. This is a perfect time for all of you to dive back into The Sims 1 and to start playing this game again. If you play The Sims 1 and are a little tired of the outdated interface of the game, well boy are you in for a treat today. After a lot of searching and networking with various Sims players on many Discord chats, I finally found a modder who has created an updated UI for The Sims 1. Now in my opinion, this alternative UI replacement is an absolute must if you want to update your game's look and feel. Today I'm going to walk you guys through on how to download this mod step by step because the instructions in all honesty are pretty vague, so let's go ahead and dive in. But first, you need to grab the link that's in the video description below that will take you to the page where we will download this mod. So let's do that first. All right, well, the link is on a Tumblr website. This is the creator, Just Me Ha. And if you scroll here to the very front, you will see the Sims 1 alternative UI post that they recently posted. This is honestly the only Sims 1 UI replacement that I have been able to find, and it was created recently. At the time of this recording, the year is 2022, and this was posted back in April. So this is really new. Now, I'm a member of the Lazy Duchess server group, and this was the only way I came across this mod and I absolutely lost my when I saw this. So all we need to do here is to just scroll to the bottom of this first post and click on this download link here for Sim File Share. Now for me, if I click on it, it immediately downloads, but I get a warning that it says it can't be downloaded securely. But if you click on the three dots here and select keep, that is totally fine. I think a lot of the reason for this error is because it contains program files from the game. That's my thought. It's probably tracking it as a probable threat, but it isn't. So we're going to go ahead and click on keep anyway, and that will download the zip file. Now, if you've never extracted a file before, not to worry, you can download an application to be able to do that. A lot of people use 7-zip. That's a great one. I happen to be using WinRAR. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to navigate to our program files and we need to locate the install directory of the Sims Complete Collection. If you've watched my previous tutorial on the widescreen patcher, then you already know how to do this. However, if you're new, you just need to locate the install directory of the game. Often, more times than not, that will be in your C drive, and for me, that happens to be the case. But if you did download your game to an external drive or an SSD, that's where the files will be located. Mine is in my C drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that, go to program files times 86, and we're gonna navigate to where our game files are located, and that's really gonna be dependent upon how you got this game. I'm gonna double click on the Sims Complete Collection here, and now a crucial step I want all of you to do. This is very crucial, so pay close attention. You're gonna want to scroll down to your UI graphics folder, copy it, and paste it on your desktop or to a hard drive. Now, if you don't make a copy of the UI graphics file and you find that you really want to go back to the original interface of the game, you won't be able to do that. So you need to copy this file. If and when I ever decide to go back to the original UI of the game, I will just simply take that original UI graphics folder and drop that in here. Now, the next step we need to do after we have copied our original UI graphics folder is to go to our downloads folder. After you've navigated to your downloads folder, you should have this zip file that says TS1 UI, which stands for The Sims 1 UI. The next thing you're going to need to do is to just right click on your zip file and to extract it. I'm going to go ahead and extract it into my downloads bin. Now, as you can see, there are a number of folders here. The instructions are here, but since you're watching this tutorial, you don't need to worry about the file. Now the first step, which is pretty crucial, is to know which resolution you play the game in. Now if you watch my widescreen patch tutorial, chances are you're playing at 1920 by 1080 so the folder that you're going to need is the one that says 1920 res. 
Pretty much all of us, in my opinion, are probably playing in widescreen mode at this point, so we're going to use the 1920 res folder. But before we do that, we need to take the UI graphics folder here from the zip file and drag this into the Sims Complete Collection folder. What that's going to do is it's going to replace the existing UI graphics folder. This is how this mod works. It replaces the UI of the game. This is very crucial, so let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and drag this UI graphics folder into your Sims Complete Collection folder. Now you are going to get a pop-up that's going to ask if you want to replace the files in the destination. We want to, so we're going to click yes. You will get a notification that you need administrator permission to move forward. You're just going to click continue and that will override that for you. All right, so the first step is now complete. Now that we have the original UI graphics folder replaced with the new one, we want to go ahead and double click into this folder. The next thing we want to do is to navigate back to our downloads folder where we extracted this file originally and select the correlating resolution for your monitor. For this tutorial, we're playing in widescreen, so we need the 1920 res folder. Go ahead and double click on that and double click again on the UI graphics. Now in this folder specifically, you will see a number of folders here that correlate with the folders in the UI graphics folder that you have downloaded into your game. Now this step is crucial, otherwise the game's gonna look broken. A lot of the UI is dependent upon the resolution of your screen, so I can't stress enough that you need to follow this step. What we're gonna do here is just simply take all of these UI graphics folders from the correlating resolution folder that you need and drag them into the actual UI graphics folder that we put into our install directory. I'm just gonna drag all of these here and we want to replace the files in the destination. Once again, we're getting the administrator permission notification. That's entirely fine. Just click continue. And once that's done, that is it, you guys. We have now installed the new UI for our Sims 1 game. Let's go ahead and boot up the game and check everything out. I am really excited to look at this. Wow, you guys, check this out. This is so cool. It's so modern. I really appreciate that the creator of this mod added these little plum bobs in the background here. This is really beautiful, and I love that it's modern, but it keeps the early aesthetic and color scheme of the original Sims game. I really like that a lot. We're in Neighborhood 2, and we're going to go ahead and hang out with the Burb family really quick and check out the rest of the new UI. This does a really great job of modernizing the overall UI of the game without really changing a lot of the original aesthetic. I just love this so much. We're going to go ahead and dive in to create a sim really quickly because I have a feeling that that's changed. I love this. I'm not a huge fan of the green in the background, but that might just be because the creator was not able to override that. Wow, the updated interface in Create a Sim is phenomenal. Again, I just really appreciate that the purple was still in the game. That's just my favorite thing about the original Sims one is the purple and blue color schemes. But I really do love the correlation with the green here. It's really nice on the eyes and it really lets you know what you have selected. Absolute props to the creator of this mod. I absolutely love this and I am without a doubt going to be keeping this in my game. Now, if you have yet to download the widescreen patch for the game, I highly recommend doing that before downloading this mod. You can check out my previous tutorial. I will link it in the video description box and I will put a link to the video here as well. This definitely gets two thumbs up from me. I absolutely love this new update to the UI of The Sims 1. This is a perfect time for all of you to dive back into The Sims 1 and to start playing this game again. Well, that wraps up today's tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do me a big favor by smashing that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. If you really enjoy my tutorial videos, you might also enjoy my Let's Plays. Thank you so much for watching. This is Ian with Nostalgic Games, and I will catch you next time. Bye.